Hi everybody, welcome to the sixth video of this series where we make an 8-ball pool game while using only JavaScript and HTML5. In the last video, we implemented the shoot method on both the stick class and the ball class so that when we'll release the left button on our mouse, it will shoot the ball towards the position of the pointer. And we also display this shooting animation as you can see right here on the canvas. Okay, so now I'll open the vector2.js file and there I want to add a method so I could get the length of a given vector. Uh, so vector2.prototype.length and that will be equal a function. And here I'm going to return the result of the length formula on the given vector. And I'm going to calculate that uh, using the math object of JavaScript. Okay, great. Inside ball.js, I want to add another property to the ball class that will indicate whether the ball is moving or not. So this dot moving will be initially false. And inside the update method, I want to um, set it to be false if dot, this dot velocity dot length uh, is uh, less than, let's say five. So if that happens, I want to set this dot moving to be uh, false. And before that, I want to set uh, this dot velocity to be a new vector two. So it's X and Y values will be zeros. And inside the shoot method, after I um, change the velocity, I want to set this dot moving to be true. And I'm going to add another uh, property to the stick class and I'm going to call this property this.shot and initially it will be false. Maybe I can find a better name, but for now that will do. Uh, and inside the shoot method, I want to um, set this.shot to be true. And inside the game world, uh, we'll implement another uh, method that I will call uh, game world .prototype um balls moving and that will be equal a function and for now we only have uh, one ball uh, that this object contains so we'll return this dot white ball dot moving inside the update method um, so if all the balls uh, stop moving so if um, this dot uh, balls moving and if um, this dot stick dot shot is true um, so sorry if not this dot balls moving I'll call a method inside the stick object uh, that I will name reposition and I will send uh, this dot white ball dot position. So I want to reposition the stick uh, to uh, the new position of the white ball. So let's open uh, stick.js again and here I'm going to implement this method stick dot prototype dot reposition and that will be equal a function that will get a position as an argument and uh, it will set this dot position to be uh, a copy of this position the the position argument and i'm going to set uh, this dot origin to be equal um, the stick origin constant a copy of it. Now back in the browser, let me refresh. And once the ball stops moving, the stick changes its position to be the same as the new position of the white ball.
Just one final thing before we move on. On the reposition method that we just wrote, let's set this dot shot to be false. And let's see that everything still works as it should. Okay, great. In assets.js, let's load some more sprites. Um, so the first one will be uh, the sprite of the red ball. And the second one will be the sprite of the yellow ball. And the last one will be the sprite of the black ball. Now I will create a new file that will go by the name of color.js and there I'm going to define something that we call in other languages an enum. And uh, it will contain all the different colors that we use on our game. So uh, red, yellow, black, and white, and each color is going to have a different value. Back in assets.js, I will implement a helper function that will provide me the sprite that I want based on the color that I will send it. So I will call this function get ball sprite by color and it will get as an argument a color and here I'm going to um, create a switch case uh, statement. So switch color and in case the color is um, color.red. I will return the red sprite. Okay, so I filled it up with the rest of the colors and now we can uh, go to the ball class and change the function constructor so it will get a color as an argument and here I'm going to set the sprite, this dot sprite to be uh, get uh, ball sprite by color and to send the color uh, that we got as an argument. And here in the draw method we can just delete sprites dot white ball and send this dot sprite instead. So now we have to go back to the game world and to send uh, the color that we want for the white ball which is of course white and let's go to the index.html file and add a reference to the um, color.js file that we just wrote. So script src and that will be equal uh, color.js. Back in our browser, everything still works fine. In purpose of testing, let's uh, change the color to be red and let's refresh the browser and that also works. Great. So let's change it back to be white as we want it to be. Okay, so let me paste a bit of code here because I don't see the point of writing it all again. What you see here in front of you is an array that contains all the different arguments that we need in order to create our ball objects. So you can see that each element in this array is actually a pair that uh, contains a position and a color. And eventually we use the map function in order to take every parameter and to pass it into the ball uh, function constructor to create a new ball. So at the end of the day, what you get is that this dot balls contains all the balls, uh, all the ball objects that we need uh, in our game. So down here, instead of creating a new uh, object for the white ball member, we can just refer it to the last um, object in the array that we just created. And maybe we'll change it in the future, but for now that will do. And down here in the update method, we can just loop over this array and write for let i equals zero, i is less than this dot balls dot length, i plus plus, and to call this dot balls at i dot update and to send the delta of course. And let's uh, copy that and paste that on the draw method 
So uh, we can loop over the array and instead of calling the update method, we can call the draw method. So back in our browser, finally, you can see that our uh, setup, at least visually, is pretty much complete. Okay, everybody, so I have another challenge for you and this is what we'll implement in the next video. So what you'll see here is collision detection and collision handling. So you'll see that uh, once I shoot the ball towards the other balls, you'll see some movement going on and collisions and fun. So uh, give it a shot and try to make it and see you in the next video. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching it and stay tuned for more. Goodbye.